from Grow Traffic. We're here on what is a Bank Holiday Monday Friday, so none of us have got any idea what we're doing. And because we're supposed to be on a day off as well, I think uh, a bit of silliness has entered the mood today. Um, but we're here today to talk about social media. A lot of businesses, obviously, have uh, been affected by the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of them were probably using a little bit of social media beforehand. Some of them uh, might be quite proficient in it, but didn't feel like they were getting anything from it. And, and a lot of people, I've spoken to a lot of businesses recently who've just said, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing with it. I don't, I don't want to start. I don't know where to begin. There's so many things. What am I supposed to do? Obviously, this is this is like we're going to talk for the next 45 to 50 minutes. So we're not going to be able to cover everything about social media. But hopefully we'll give you a little bit of a, a taster that will give you enough to, to get you going and give you some pointers in the right direction. So I've got an amazing team of women on here with me today. You might notice that uh, three of us are grow traffic, but we also have somebody who's not grow traffic, so it's not entirely grow traffic. Um, but I'll go around and introduce yourselves now. So I'm Rachel Weinhold. I'm the uh, MD of grow traffic. Uh, we are uh, obviously a, a, social, a search engine optimization agency, but as part of that, we do quite a lot of social media and a lot of the stuff we've been doing recently has been training people how to use social media. So Hannah, who are you? Uh, I'm Hannah. I'm a director of Grow Traffic. Um, I'm based over in Rotherham. So with Alicia, she and I head up um, the Rotherham contingency of Grow Traffic. Jenny, who are you? I don't know today. What day is it? I don't even know my own name. Um, on... <laughs> um, I'm Jenny Hardman. I'm a business coach helping business directors and business owners to focus on the right stuff. Brilliant. And Alicia, who are you? I'm Alicia from Grow Traffic. I'm the head of content. Um, I do some social media for clients and have done in the past as well, but I also manage grow traffic social media. Yes, and she does a stonking job. Um, so first question I would like to ask you is is about your kind of personal experience. I know Lissy's just touched on it there, but do you use social media? Do you use it personally? Do you use it for business? What do you feel about it? Because I know there are some people, we had a client once um, who thought that, that Facebook was going to be the downfall of society and refused point blank to use it. So on, on the downfall of I agree. society and the best things in sliced bread, tell me where you are. So Hannah, where, what, what's your experience with social media? Um, personally, I used to use it quite a bit. I don't use it anymore just because I think um, probably not that interesting. Um, I only use it if I want to talk about work or if there's some something that I feel needs spouting, like my passive aggressive comment this morning about people staying indoors. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but other than that, I don't, don't particularly use it for myself. I don't really post pictures of my kid or anything like that. Um, but for businesses, it's an amazing tool. Mm. Jenny, what about you? Um, I think I'm the one on here that's a completely off piece. Um, I, I just say what I'm thinking before I even think it. I think on social media, regardless of who's watching, mm. um, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, you shouldn't mm. do that. It's unprofessional. You'll lack credibility. I don't, I don't care. Look, the people I want to work with get me and get, get who I am and what I'm about and what I'm talking about. And if someone doesn't, they don't like it, off you pop. Um, yeah. And I use my... <laughs> personal social media a lot for business um but i must say i do not sell on my personal page if that makes sense i tell stories mm. and it's a bit about personal life and how i use that within business and how other people can use that tip um do i post stuff about my kids yeah of course i do um they're the bonkers um so it makes people laugh um do i post that i'm making a tin of beans no who cares yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And we are going to come back to that that storytelling aspect and, and the not selling, because that's one of the biggest things that people make on social media. So, Alicia, what about you? What's your experience? How do you use it? Um, pers personally, um, I'm a big fan of social media. I try not to be, but I'm pretty basic and post my entire life online. Enjoy arguing with people on Facebook. I've got no filter. Um, <laughs> I like her already. <laughs> pretty much every single social media platform there is as well. Um, so, yeah, big fan. And then from a professional point of view, I've managed social media for clients and for businesses I've worked for uh, for a number of years. Yeah, <clears throat> I think um, that's, that's one of the things that uh, we are, and we probably will come back to this, but people 
get get worried about using social media for business. I think one of the biggest barriers that they think is 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 a that it's going to get mixed up in the personal stuff, and they don't they, they want to kind of keep the two things separate. But also, it's that 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 fear of well, what should I post? What if I'm not professional? What if what if somebody disagrees with something I've put out there? What if I'm going to put off you know a potential customer? But as Jenny said. If, if they're going to be put off, if your potential customers are going to be put off by something that you've said on Facebook, they're not the right customer for you. You know, people buy from people. and We've got a, a, another session coming up on this in the future. Um, but, you know, they buy into you as a person and that your business is intrinsically linked to who you are as a person. So, yes, you can have separate, you can separate, you know, you can have your business Twitter and your personal Twitter, your business page and your Facebook, personal Facebook page. But... There's no, there's no need to get worked up about. Oh, it's got to be really corporate and really professional over here, and then I, you know, I can post all my stupid stuff over here. They're intrinsically linked. I think that's like a good point, Rach, that a lot of people um, miss. That it's a bit like blogging. It's your opportunity to speak directly to your customer base. So why wouldn't you want that to be your authentic voice? Like if you hold opinions and views that you know are controversial and you wouldn't say it to someone's face, then probably don't post it on social media. You know, if you're a BNP diehard supporter or whatever, and you wouldn't want to tell a customer that, don't put it on your social media. Mm -hmm. But if it's an authentic representation of who you and your team and your business culture are, then that is what you're selling. That is the point of it. And if you make a, a statement that some people don't agree with, then when if you met them face to face, they probably won't buy off you anyway, because yeah. they, wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't, gel with you so it's okay to not be everybody's cup of tea and it's okay especially on social media i think like that's yeah. that's a big point to make i actually aim for that and, and, and i think you guys do as well um because for me i don't want people to like me because if they like me they kind of meh i want people to really love me or really hate me because either way they're going to shout about it especially on facebook and linkedin when they're arguing with us on the post what they don't realize is they're actually you know increasing our reach because of the people are seeing it and i'm like thanks for that <laughs> yeah that's the other thing as well isn't it that like any any engagement on your post is is good engagement and it's okay like you know if you share something from the bmp just for an example and if anybody is a member of the bmp um, <laughs> i invite you to go elsewhere <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know if you do share something you're not you don't necessarily have to say this is my opinion and part of part of the, the corporate social medias um, and <laughs> like objective is to build a rapport and to build some sort of engagement so that the posts that are more salesy are shared wider to a wider audience. Hmm. I think that is one of the things that we've, we've, we've come up against this with clients in the past when we've been doing stuff for clients um, and, you know, we've, we've, we've posted something, uh, I know for, for one client once there was an article about the, the royal family. And they were like, oh, we don't want to be seen as, as royalist or we don't want to be seen as anti-royalist or whatever. And he's like, okay, you're overthinking this. Now. You've got to just, can't, you know, just put it. And we hadn't said either way. You're like, oh, my God, we hate the royal family in the comments. It was like, what, you know, what's your opinion on this? It was an item in the news. People are talking about it. People want to engage in that conversation. And by posting about that on your page and getting that conversation going, you are actively helping yourself. You know, as the general rules are, as Hannah said, don't be racist racist don't be homophobic don't be sexist don't be an utter twunt but you know just uh, engage in that debate and let people express their opinions because as you say jenny even if they're disagreeing with you they are helping you because the algorithms are saying oh there's loads of comments going on this post let's show it to even more people so yeah <clears throat> i think i think the other thing as well is that people get um get get scared about the um the kind of things that they they should be posting as well and overthink it of like, well, and there is a there is an element of you pick your audience. So, you know, speak to people about one thing on Facebook and something else on Twitter and change the tone a little bit for LinkedIn. You do have to do that. But again, people forget it regardless of what platform you're on, people are there to be social. It is a social <laughs> media platform and even on LinkedIn people want a little bit of humor and they want something to break the monotony of the normal day so it's fine to be a little bit funny it's fine to put up you know a meme or a, a silly quiz or something just just don't overthink it and get carried away with it I think 
and it's so transient whatever you put up will absolutely be gone in about well on twitter in about three minutes on facebook in about a day so like that's the other thing don't get so hung up because it's so fleeting it will be gone yeah, no, nobody's going to remember that that business that posted a news article they didn't like back in 2016. Exactly. <laughs> and this is what I always say to people when we're talking about social media is, is think about how you use it because chances are that your ideal customers are going to be quite like you. So think about how you use social media and would you unfriend somebody just because they you saw a post that they didn't that, that you weren't interested in you wouldn't you would just you wouldn't click like you would just go past it if you weren't interested you wouldn't go and be like right that's it i did not agree with that article so i'm gonna go and it's just not how you know if you did it over and over and over <laughs> <laughs> you do get it you do get it though and i have to say this i've had this conversation a few times recently with with clients in terms of they're afraid to put something out on social media because they're afraid of what potential negativity that they might might draw towards themselves it's very different working for a company and managing social media to being a business owner or business director mm. and putting something out there because it's actually more personal mm. and a lot of people take it more as a direct hit because you they feel that they're attacking them as a business owner rather than in, in a corporate world and the, the biggest thing i can say and i know i'm going off piece to you is find a book called the courage to be disliked um it's it, it's it's a self-help book it's based on adlerian psychology the courage to be disliked yeah. it's all about perceptions and views and worldviews and everything else it's really interesting but what i've done is i gain a lot of hate online and i've grown to love it i actively seek it because i get so much engagement out of it just just laughing myself and i get a lot due to all my artwork and my piercings and do you know what? You've just got to step back and just think, what is going on in this person's life that they feel the need to take time out of their day to post negatively to me, someone they don't know? And do you know what? Most of the time it isn't about me or you or what we're posting. It's because they've got something going on in their life that they just need to project on somebody else. So it's just taking that step yeah. back. And it's they're not getting at you, but I know a lot of us do take it personally. Um, and it's, it's trying to um, disconnect yourself from that a little bit. Yeah, that's true. No, go on, You go, you. Uh, no, I was going to say actually because um, you know we we had and this happened less. It happens less now. It happened more kind of four or five years ago. But businesses were were really fearful of going onto social media because there was the odd horror story of a company that had got a tweet wrong or you know got the tone slightly wrong. People said, oh, you know, it'll it'll make or break you. Well. You know, yes, there can be a little bit of, of negativity and bad press if you get something really wrong. But if you look back over the history of social media and brands, very few brands have actually fallen and had a downfall because they've put something out on social media that somebody didn't like. Like, like you say, I, I, generally it will actively help you and it gets the engagement. And if somebody's been negative towards you, there are, there are 10 people who will jump in and be more positive towards you to defend you and I think a lot of that as well um rather than being a, a business brand thing a lot of that is about women you know women I, I'm not going to get on the soapbox about women because I could um but women do get an awful lot more criticism online that men get especially female entrepreneurs who are doing their own thing and putting the voice out there do experience an awful lot of criticism but you've got to you've got to get past it because the benefits are are bigger to you than than not doing it Absolutely. so you do just like swallow swallow your your I don't know hurt and, and crack on with it don't you um I want so I want to that's that's a kind of really a really good introduction on on you know getting over the fear and just going for social media and getting on with it so what are what are any other reasons I've mentioned there that you know that the benefits are better than the negativity so what are the benefits to businesses of being on social media Alicia what what do you think <clears throat> the benefits are is the biggest and most obvious one would be you can increase your audience potentially make more sales because that's building engagement um all those targets what they all ultimately lead back to is to selling whatever product or service you're selling so you're just expanding your audience and hopefully increasing sales that's the biggest benefit mm -hmm. jenny what about you um, for me, and, and you touched on this before, uh, people forget this, social media is about being social. It's not about posting by my shit and all that because no one reads it, no one engages it. It's about 
building relationships. So I work quite heavily on building, you know, credible, deep relationships to, do you know what it, it is? It's like, it's like looking at your business. Do you want a one night stand or do you want a long term relationship? And it, it's the same in business and it's the same mm -hmm. on social media. Then relationships start on social media. Uh, excuse me. Um, what I do, if anyone connects with me on, on Facebook or LinkedIn, they initially get a message from me going, you know, great to be connected. You know, tell me a little bit more about you. You know, most people miss this opportunity for having a chat. I do get a lot of people that come back and tell me to F off. Great, fine, block, <laughs> off you go, next one. Next one, because I'm not there to sell them anything, I'm seeing how I can help them. And the amount of relationships that I've developed that way, no, it's not immediate. No, you don't get sales that day, you know, that week, possibly that month. But I'm now working with people in countries all around the world just through speaking to people on social media. I wouldn't have had that reach if we didn't have social media. Mm, it's absolutely use it use it properly mm, yeah it is absolutely hannah what about you i think um like obviously what the other two have said but also about building that authentic voice you know you don't it, it's really bad to say you don't want time wasters in your business but you don't want to be flogging a dead horse and trying to sell to people who you're never going to convert because they are not your audience, they don't buy into your culture, they don't buy into your services, and you as your brand or or you know whatever. And so, social media, if you use it correctly, is a really good way of kind of saying, look, this is who we are. Um, like us or don't, take it or leave it. And if people like you, then then they'll work with you. And if they don't, then that's absolutely fine. But um, you know, the grow traffic social media is very giddy and quite um like it's not corporate but that is exactly what you get when you meet any of us we are not corporate and we are just like yeah. ridiculous bunch the, of people and the, the and majority that's... sorry i'm interrupting no, go on, <laughs> i was just going to say that the the majority of posts that you see on our facebook page it's me who's offered them but it wouldn't look out of place you wouldn't know if it were rachel or hannah saying it we i kind of try and use a collective voice that represents if Grow Traffic had a voice, that's where it'd be like, and it's a combination of all the team. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be very sad. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Yeah, and I think that, that, that's important, that, and that's why it's important that you're not too cautious with your social media, that you do use an authentic tone, um, which I appreciate is difficult when you're a business, like a company, and there's more than just you, um, but that's why you get someone really good to manage your but social media. For some businesses, um, social media can be the first experience vocalising their brand because normally your brand is it's on paper or it's 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 visual. Um, with social media, you're actually giving a voice to your brand, and it can take a while to work out what that voice sounds like. You know, um, is it like? hey babes like or is it you know is it a, a little bit more professional and you you do play around with it a little bit but you will find um certainly like a a, a voice that you want to be consistent with i think it, yeah. i want to add on there as well with with branding and you know your target audience and how you speak i'm a business coach and generally you'd expect business coaches to be corporate and what i call vanilla in a suit <laughs> Not me. Um, I, I turn up to business meetings in, you know, Doc Martins full of skulls, ripped jeans, a baseball cap, because that's who I am. And I tried to tone down my voice a lot because I was told by multiple business coaches and people I was working with that you need to tone yourself down a little bit. You need to come across a little bit more professional. Uh, 1st of January, I thought, yeah, right, screw that. Throw it out the window. I'm going to be me. I'm going to be bonkers. It's all going to be about unicorns, furry dust and fucking everything else that goes on in my life. And... Um, my connections went through the roof and my client base has gone through the roof, absolutely through the roof. I've never onboarded as many clients in my life as I have done these last six weeks. Absolutely. It's about being yourself. Well, absolutely, because there are millions of corporate coaches out there. You know, if I if I if I wanted to find a really, you know, plain, boring business coach, a professional, if you like, business coach, and I was one of those people. If I, what I would want out of a business coach or any, you know, any kind of coach is somebody who is a, is a bit more like me. And and you are, you know, like the first thing you said to me when I walked into that B and I meeting was, "Oh, you've got a facial piercing." I thought I was the only one, you know. But that was a thing that we we made a connection over because we can see similarities in each other. So that is what I would want. I would want to work with somebody who understands me as a person. Yeah. And grow traffic is not 
corporate and we are not boring and we are not stuffy. So that is what we would look for. And and we're not the only one, you know, we're not the only two companies in the world who are like that. There's hundreds of them out there. So you absolutely have to be yourself and, yeah. and put across. Because Hannah says otherwise, you walk into a meeting, you know, if we're all giddy and silly on, on social media and we've, we've got all the silly things that we do and then you, we walk into a meeting in suits and we never crack a smile, that people are going to think, well, hang on, who the heck is this then? Mm-hmm. So you do, you're right. So you have to be. I think one of the other things as well with with the benefits to, for, to businesses for using it, it's just that it's free. Yeah. You know, how many other uh, channels out there, means of marketing are there that are completely free to, to go and start having a go at? Um, and you lose nothing apart from, you know, a couple of hours of your life browsing around on Facebook. But you lose nothing by creating a, a page, uh, putting some posts out there, starting those conversations, joining some groups, and just seeing what comes of it. You know, it, it doesn't have to be, if you've got a social media strategy and you set out with a plan, then fine. But just starting to have those conversations with people, get your business name out there so people start to know who you are. And in the same way that you would use kind of networking, so, you know, a real world networking, whether that be your BNI, Bob, Spark Networking, whatever it be, your social media channel should be the same thing. And, and you should be out there networking, talking to people, as I said, promoting your business. And and you can you can spend money on it if you want. You can start to do paid social campaigns and stuff, which we're not going to go into today because it's the whole thing. If you if you don't want to do that, as I say, it's it's completely free, and that's the most cost effective way of marketing that there is out there. Um, uh, so, Rach, Peter's yeah. asked a question. Do you think we should answer it now? It's a really good question. It's do you think social media is a good way yes. to educate people? Yes. Go on. Yes. Oh, we've lost her. She'll come. Back. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Can you just we've lost like, Jenny just as she was getting really excited. Um, the question, just as you asked. <laughs> uh, the question was from Peter from Vital Force Massage. She says, "Do you think it's a good way to educate people?" Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Go on. I'm back. I'm back. You're back. Don't know where I went, back. Man. <laughs> go on, Jen. You were you were nodding there, so go on. You answer it. Is it a good way to educate people? Yes. Um, your website generally is is pretty static. I would say I'm not being you know detrimental there but most websites are pretty static and it is what it is and it takes ages to change things upload it and it, it, it's just it's not it doesn't flow your social media you can post 20 times a day if you want to so you can do little 30 second introduction videos you can do posts you can put educational bits up it's all about educating people around your subject if that makes sense so what are your 10 top frequently asked questions answer that within posts in videos because people want to know they will only come back to your page and engage with you if it's something relevant and interesting if you're posting something about i don't know how to rewire a plug um but you're you know you're a hairdresser it's a bit irrelevant so again it's knowing your audience but saying that putting a meme on about wiring a plug and you know telling a joke about it i mean because i would you know telling a joke about how many women does it take to change a plug that would resonate with my audience if that makes sense there are things that you can you can mold around if that makes sense but the key is knowing your audience and who you're speaking to um but educating people that's what it's there for it's educating about what you're about what you do why you do it which is the biggest thing why you do what you do this I, I would even argue, I'd argue that that to edu- educating people is is the primary reason for being on social media as a business because um, if you think about and I'm not going to get kind of too technical into the marketing funnel bit but you know where when the point that people are in the marketing funnel when you are engaging them with social media they're right at the top you know they don't know about you or your business necessarily they don't know about the solution that you're offering they're not even looking for it especially if we're talking about Facebook they're not on there to look at pictures of their friends kids or the birthday cakes that grand made last week or that sort of thing they're not looking for a product or service actively most of the time but what they might have is they've got the problem, the problem that you could solve with your product or service. So it's about um, using that as a means of talking to them at that stage in the in the cycle that they are, and say, right, all right, you know, <clears throat> I'm not as, as you know, and we will come back to this. I'm not going to try and sell you my my cream because you don't, you don't know what the benefits of my face cream are yet. But you know, have you got wrinkles? Are you suffering with bags under your eyes? You know, does your skin look really? 
we, no, no, we're all fine, aren't we? <laughs> well, you know, we're all, we're all sexy, so, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, so those are the problems people are facing at the point that they're on social media. So speak to them about that, and then you can take them on that journey with you. You provide a little bit more content, talk around that issue, talk a bit more, maybe direct them to a blog post that you've written a bit about it. And it starts to build that community where you become um, a, a really bit, you know, good player within that community of engaged audience, but also you can then become a kind of thought leader within it and you can start to lead the conversation and take it in other directions. Um, but absolutely, you know, what Jenny said there about posting, and we will come back to kind of what, what's the best things to post, but it doesn't always have to be about your you said it, and it shouldn't in fact always be about you and your product or service it should be about the whole industry that you operate in and then anything that's relevant to it anything that your audience might be interested in you know say for example i don't know i'm uh, i'm talking about i sell uh, something to do with cats Probably people who own cats are also going to be interested in dogs. So occasionally you could post some things about dogs as well. It's just create the content that your audience wants, essentially. What were you going to say, Alicia? Um, I was just going to say, it's, um, it all goes back to having um, a really good content marketing strategy in place um, because that incorporates social media. Um, because you'll want to get your web content out using social media. But also think about the type of content on social media as part of the content marketing strategy so it'll be slightly different to what's on your website um and it's just going going back to what jen said about thinking about that broader range of things it's not specifically selling your products and showing your products off but educating people about the use for the products how it can help them or the service um, and what it can do for them mm, absolutely yeah. So with that in mind, um, you know, what, what would be the best platforms, do you think, for people to, to start off with? I mean, we've talked most of the time here about Facebook and getting a Facebook page. And I think that is obviously the most common one, isn't it? The majority of, of businesses have a Facebook page before they have anything else. Um, but, but what are your thoughts about that? Hannah, what do you think about platforms? I mean, it depends on the business and, and the target audience. Facebook is almost a given. There's a billion people on Facebook. So if your business is not on Facebook, then you are missing an enormous audience. But it's not always the sole platform that you should use. Um, and it's not, you shouldn't just necessarily just post on Facebook. Um, I mean, like, don't just post, like, take advantage of marketplace and watch parties and things like that on Facebook as well as just the news feed. Um, but, you know, LinkedIn is not bad if you know how to work it and you've got the time to go and commit to actively engaging with everybody else because you don't get anywhere on LinkedIn if you don't. It Like, Instagram is amazing if your brand is more visual or you're trying to appeal to a really wide audience it's good for um driving sales instagram so it really does depend on your on your your target audience like pinterest is fantastic if you're a very visual brand and you've got an actual product to sell um but but you need to do your research and figure out where are your competitors getting the majority of their traffic and engagement from um, and capitalize on that go where your competitors are because where your competitors are is where your business is Mm. I know. I've, got, Go on, Jenny. I've got something to add to that. I, 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 just because you laugh at this, and this will either put people off me or make them come towards me, and I'm fine with that. So, social media is, you know what, you you, you should be on every platform because there's people everywhere. You, you're going to connect with people everywhere. But the biggest piece of advice I could give you as as a, as a coach is def, really define your target audience and just be on two platforms that they're mostly on, and, and learn how to do two platforms, you know, properly. Yeah. and then you're not diluting your message mm -hmm. and when you were saying about research where your competitors are yeah definitely research where your competitors are what they're doing what they're not doing definitely what they're not doing so about 18 months ago i went back on the dating scene and i was on tinder and um i actively swiped right on the business owners what is that? What swipe right, reject or accept? No, that that's that's accepting. I can't remember. It was a long time. Swiping right is accepting them. So yeah. I, I was matching with them because they were business owners. Yeah. I'm a business coach. Now, if they swiped right as well and matched with me, we've already got a connection because they've already seen something in me that they connect with. So they want a conversation. 
the amount of clients that I onboarded that year was immense. No, they were all men, clearly. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sure. It is, but no, honestly, they need they needed help. Um, and I, I always said, What do you do? I was like, I'm a business coach. Oh, that sounds really interesting. What do you do? So I told them, I really need you in my life. Yeah, I know you do. Did you provide the link, Jen? <laughs> I only I only provided business coach. I never actually dated any of them because I actually flipped it and I actually started dating people off LinkedIn instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. If it all fails with business, just use it as a dating platform. No, but I'm only messing. But it is. It's looking at what your competitors are not using. You know, any any platform is a marketing platform. It just depends who your target audience is and how you use it. Right. I think the other thing as well is think about think about the age of your audience as well as kind of you know where they are. So yes, Pinterest is is one of the biggest growing social media uh, platforms amongst the over fifty five. Whereas obviously, if you've got a really young demographic, they're going to be on Snapchat and they're going to be on TikTok rather than you know Facebook or whatever. We were saying this morning, weren't we, about how you know when we were younger, and we were really glad that Facebook wasn't around because we didn't want our teenage years documented but obviously our kids now are growing up and reaching an age where they will be on Facebook but obviously their parents are on there so why are kids going to want to be on a social network where their parents are they're going to be on a different one so if you have a product or a service that is particularly applicable to the younger generation or will be in the next kind of five years that's who you need to come up through the ranks then you need to get yourselves on those platforms mm. to figure this out is, this is why it's it's important to do to really research where that audience is, what you and understand and know what your target audience is. Um, going back to what um, Jen said, it is important, I would say, to get really good at two platforms rather than. My number one tip would be do, don't spread yourself too thinly. Mm -hmm. If you try and do every single platform, a, there'll be um, you'll be talking to people and not interested because your audience isn't there. But you'll be doing a rubbish job. Get really good at doing a couple of platforms, and then you can add some more in. You know, there's plenty of businesses that I'm aware of that have made a killing just on Instagram alone. That's it. They only use Instagram, and they've built huge businesses on the back of it. So just get good at a couple of things first. Yeah, I know it's such a big time commitment to do it to do it properly. You know, if you're putting out properly branded images and content and really considering your message and working to a content calendar, it's not it's not just chucking up three posts a day or or you know, putting on three photos off your phone. It's about making it on brand and it takes such a lot of time. And if you're doing three or four, chances are you're not doing it right or not doing it well. Yeah, I used to know a, a a girl who was a she she was a quite a rising star in Instagram. I still know her, but she was quite a rising star in Instagram. Um, and her she was having a, like a constant battle with her parents because she was starting to get sponsored. She had you know several thousand followers. People started to send her stuff, and she started to do paid posts. And and her parents were like, "Well, what on earth do you do all day? You know what? Why are you just there taking photos?" She was like, "Well, it takes ages to get the right photo with the right light that the that the brand and the company are going to be." pleased with that they're going to pay me for it you know she, she was like that takes time and it does and especially like with tiktok as well you know they're only some of them are like five ten second videos but if you're doing that as a as a company like as hannah says you've got to make sure your message is on point you know everything in that video is on point any music what they say you know everything that's not uh, sitting on Facebook and just just putting off a, a quick five minute ranty post you know that takes time so if you're gonna if you're going to choose one of those channels that requires a little bit more um, time dedication, you've got to make sure you do that properly and don't just do a half ass job. Else, you'll, you'll, any effort you do put in will just be completely wasted. Mm. So we talked about kind of the platforms that people should go on to. Um, we, we've touched on already kind of what, what people should be posting, but I'd like to come back to that a little bit more. I don't know if anybody's been on our um, growth traffic, well, you're on our growth traffic page now, aren't you, watching this? Um, but as Hannah said, we're, we are quite, I don't know, giddy, quite silly. But the, the reason for that is that, first of all, SEO is boring if you're not in it. Like, I love it. I think it's fantastic. But the majority of people don't care about search engine optimization. So just posting about that 
it's not going to get people's interest whatsoever. Um, but the other thing is that, that Facebook is not where people have come to learn about SEO. They might go on LinkedIn or, or Twitter to do that, but they've not come to Facebook to do that. So we want to have a conversation with them, as I said before, that's appropriate to the point that they are at when they're seeing our posts. So we have all sorts of stuff on there. We have our, our What the Fuck Wish Wednesday. We've got our, our Spotify lockdown playlist at the moment. Uh, we have Stock Photography Fail of the Week. There's all sorts of ridiculous memes and stuff on there that we've seen. Um, but it's exactly about that, isn't it? It's about posting the content that your audience needs. And Jenny, I know that's one of the things that, that you're passionate about, isn't it? It's the right kind of content. Yeah, I was going to say something there, but it's just completely fell out of, out of my um, colander of a brain. Um, it'll come back in a minute. It'll come back in a minute if it's important. Mm. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah, what about you? What uh, what do you post on your personal page and that's different to what you post on the, the Grow Traffic page? I don't really post on my personal page. Um, I'll only post if it's something that um, is super important to me um, that I think other people should know. But like that's so egotistical. I really struggle to know what to post on my personal page. But on the grow traffic page it seems to come a lot easier because um you know i don't know i don't know why maybe it's more interesting what we how we help i suppose it's getting to the the why isn't it like why do we do what we do yes mm -hmm. SEO is really boring but the crux of it why we do it is what everyone can relate to or every business owner can relate to which is get more customers mm -hmm. get more business get more web traffic get better rankings like the why is the most important bit. And I suppose once you figure that out, it's easier to know what to post. Mm. I think remembered what I was going to say now. Go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough caffeine today or vodka. Um, people come on social media or Facebook, especially to be entertained. I think that's mm. the biggest thing to, mm. to remember is they come on to be entertained. Um, when we think about what we post on business page versus personal page, I actually use my personal page as my business page. Don't shout at me. Um, business pages, um, engagement and reach has tanked over the last few months um, because Facebook is a business. They want you to spend money with ads and, that, and that's the way it is. If you want to sell anything on Facebook, you've got to invest money into it to get it out there. So I use my, my personal one heavily for business. But again, it's all about telling stories. Um, mm. It is the Gen Show. So if you do, you know, wander onto my profile, it is the Gen Show. Um, not like you, Hannah, you don't want to post. I'll post anything. If it's got a picture of me, I'm talking about it. Um, <laughs> but that, that's, that's, I'm not actually egotistical. It's, you know, I'm actually quite shy. Rachel will disagree. But I am actually quite a shy private person. But I do post a lot because the things I talk about, people in real life who've got businesses and families relate to it. So they're engaging and then they're sharing it with their friends and then their friends are sharing it with their friends. So that's why I use my personal profile because my average post is getting between six and 18 shares, which is then being shared even further to people I can't see. And this is just random shit that I talk about that happens being a mum in business. Uh, but I think that that is uh, one of the things. I mean, uh, there's two points there. Isn't it? The first one is that if you want to, if you are concerned about, you need your, your business and your personal profiles to be separate. Then absolutely have them separate. But yeah. for you as a coach, you are your business, and there are a lot of people like that. They, you know, sole traders, whatever. They are their business, and who they are as a person, like we said at the beginning, is intrinsically linked to what they do as a business. So so why not have it as the same? Why do you have to have a business page? If you don't want a separate business page, just use your personal profile. But one thing you do is that you tell stories. And again, we, we have mentioned this, and it is something I want to talk about, dig a little bit more into. But I think I've said it before to you, you, you write long posts on Facebook. You'll put a picture up there, but then you write long posts and they're, they're spaced out and you use emojis as bullet points and all that. They're much longer than the average post, mm -hmm. but they tell a story. And what you do really well is you start off with a, a random thing. So you're like, oh, we were, we were walking the dog down the field today. And then this happened and this happened and this happened. And then I did this in my business and this is why it's benefit. And this is what I've realized. And so there's always a point to it. It's never just like, oh, here's a nice picture of a flower. You're always saying, this is how I've grown as a person today. This is what I've learned today. This is what you know the day has taught me, which is exactly what you need to do to, 
to tell to and teach your clients, isn't it? Hundred percent, yeah. And that's what it's about. I think it's it's really really hard. I mean, everybody that I'm working with at the minute, I find are finding it really difficult to connect with their business and their target audience. And and I know we're not going into this, and we need another one on it about niching. Mm -hmm. People get scared about niching. I am very specific with who I want to work with. And I've got something, in, and I'm not going to say the word because it's a swear word, but if you're a D-head, I won't work with you. Um, don't want to work with you because I don't want to and I don't have to. But most people are like, I need as many customers as possible. You you don't. And you, you, you need to talk to those specific people in a specific way to engage them in a specific way to do a specific thing if that mm. makes sense. And yeah. it, it getting down to your the nitty gritty into your target audience it is looking more on the psychographics of that ideal client rather than, you know, the, the demographics, because it's all about how they think and what they're seeing, hearing, being told and everything else. And that's how you'll engage them. And that mm. scares a lot of people because that's some in-depth research. But it's I, I think it's exactly where you need to be starting. Mm. It is in, it absolutely is in depth research, and this comes back to what Alicia was saying before of, of do your research and have a strategy. Um, but there's also a little bit of an element of trial and error, um, mm. and I think one of the things that people don't do enough is use analytics. And, and if you're not aware, most well, all social media platforms now, especially if you have a, a business account offer free versions of analytics so you can go on and it'll show you facebook is especially good it'll show you what time of day you posted um what the post was how many people liked it if you don't know where to look on your facebook page if you go to insights it's there um but it, and it's a really it, they have it in a set out in a graph that's really easy to see so you can very quickly start to see you know, actually, when I post at eight o'clock in the morning, no bugger interacts with that. So my audience is not active at eight o'clock in the morning. My audience is active, you know, in the evening. So you can start to tailor your, your timings of your posts, the types of posts you're doing. You know, you'll quickly see whether it's video posts, memes, you know, long articles. What are they interacting with? And use that. I mean, that that's one of the things you do, Alicia, because, I, you know, when I said we changed our... Um, social media uh, strategy when was it like six months ago ish maybe a bit longer wasn't it because we weren't getting a lot of engagement on our Facebook page and it was going down and we started doing more silly things and more fun things and talking to people and, and yeah. you were in charge of that Alicia weren't you yeah it's something that um, prior to working at Grow Traffic I, I personally was a bit fearful of being too um, too friendly and over the top on social media um, and we we did post quite dry SEO content and then we just completely changed it up one day. And we actually did even have a few comments and messages, didn't we, Rachel? People remarked you that they'd noticed the change. But it's not been a bad thing because we get much more engagement now that we use um, just something that's more realistic and silly, really, rather yeah. than being dry. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it comes back to that. Don't be, don't be afraid of showing some personality. You don't have to be corporate. Um, and you know, people always say, like, "Oh, well, what about such and such a brand? Look at, look at theirs. You know, they're they're quite corporate." And actually, when you look through their social media page and and, and do this for some of the big brands in your industry, look through their social media profiles, see what they're doing. But you'll see, even they're quite funny. And the ones that. People remember, you know, like the, the, the ad agency that did the Burger King um, ad campaign won a million awards in 2019 for the campaign that they were doing over the last couple of years. But that was because it was really dry and that they were being really sarcastic. Whenever somebody commented, they were being sarcastic back to them. And, and at first people were like, oh, you know, what are Burger King doing here? That's a bit, you know. But actually it worked because people liked it and people responded to it. And then people were, you know, shotting it and sharing it with the other people and all that sort of stuff. So sometimes it, being not corporate is, is, well, I'll always, in fact, I would argue being not corporate is a much better strategy to being corporate. Um, so how does social media fit in with the rest of the marketing mix? Because I think sometimes it's quite easy for uh, businesses to, to say, and we get this all the time, businesses will say to us, well, I've, you know, I've, I've spent X amount of money on social media and I haven't got any leads now. Um, and they, they want that instant, and I get it, you know, if you're a managing director or finance director or whatever, you want to know that I've put X amount of money into my marketing budget and I've got X number of leads out of it. It's, that's normal. Um, but how do you maximize it? What, what would you do as the next step 
and how would you fit it in with the rest of your marketing mix? Jenny, I'm going to come to you first. How do I talk the longest? Um, <laughs> do you know what? And I, I said this to you uh, before we came on. So I've got one. I've got one sentence to say. Any social media platform is just a delivery channel. It, it is just a delivery channel for your message, and I wouldn't get too consumed with it. And the amount of people that I work alongside, and I have to do my Facebook post today. But why? Well, the world spontaneously combust if you don't do that social media post. Now, if you're doing like a, a workout Wednesday and you're doing something at the same time every week and your audience is waiting for it, then yes, stick for it to it. Your audience is waiting for it. If you're just randomly throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping some sticks, take that 20 minutes back. Don't throw the spaghetti at the wall and start researching what you need to post and, and, and when. Because throwing loads of stuff out there that's, you know, spraying everybody but not hitting anybody is absolutely pointless for me um and it might be slightly different to, to you but my experience in marketing over the last few years is getting everybody back to your website your website is your your hub pretty much okay and social media is just a way to get your message out there to the world to get them to come back to your website i have either via your blog to then go oh i like this website let's go buy something so that's how i utilize social media it's the first point of contact it's how you show your brand it's how you show up it's how you interact with people it's that first meeting the hello and then the next bit is then taking them through that journey is into get them on your on your website to buying but I think also with social media is people think somebody sees something once and they're going to buy it. I think what is it is it takes on average seven touch points for someone to actually be interested in your product. So you've got to put posts out there that are engaging and interested to somebody at least seven times before they even think they need you. So you've got you've got to be creating the right content and enough of it to get them interested in the first place. It, yeah, I think it's seven until they start engaging with you and 13 touch points until they will buy your product mm -hmm. so it's a long time and people get very disheartened by this and think well you know i've put three facebook posts out last month and, and nothing's bloody happened um and i think this is another thing as well that i want to talk about it, it's people make the mistake of thinking that they could just, just post content out there and again that is the first step that's that's the first step in a long line of, of steps that you then need to take before you even make that sale and the next bit is about nurturing that if you're not then you know if, if you put something out and someone comments on it and you don't comment back or you don't engage with that person or you don't start a conversation well that's a waste of bloody time isn't it you've, you've wasted all the effort you did in putting it out there what you've got to do is use that content to then start having those conversations and shaping it and this does take a little bit longer it takes a little bit longer in terms of you might be sat on your phone for 10 minutes rather than two minutes but it also takes a little bit longer in that this this process you could you could be kind of flirting with a potential client for six to 12 months before anything pays off before you start getting them onto your website or make that sale or whatever it is but it's about think, finding yeah go on sorry i was gonna say i think we live in a very fast-paced world we want everything now we live on yeah. social media where everything's at the, the touch of a button so we want sales now and i think a lot of people in in business have a very different mindset in business than they do in personal life think about you know your personal relationships you don't meet someone on tinder or wherever it is and arrange a first date and automatically marry them and that's it you're in love and you're happy it does happen i think sometimes very rarely it takes time it's the touch points it's the good morning beautiful text it's the bunch of flowers it's the giving someone a call seeing if they're okay nipping around with something when they need something it's all those tiny little touch points to make someone feel special it is exactly the same in business and i think the sooner that people realize that it's the same process no matter what relationship you're trying to nurture the the, the better results they're going to get quicker yeah absolutely yeah and, and it's about as i say get, getting people off the website off the social media channels then to have that conversation. and that might be yeah you get them onto your website it could also be where you've, you've booked a meeting and you're gonna have a, a proper one-to-one -one session with them when, when this is over in real life rather than over zoom <laughs> Who knows? I think we're all going to turn into alcoholics aren't we when it all gets lifted we're all going to go alcohol pub I think I'm an alcoholic now because of it, to be honest. <laughs> oh, just just quickly as well, this is completely off the point, but there's a the, the local bar near us is just started in a cocktail delivery service from tonight. So yeah, that's that'll be all over social media. You can bet your bottom dollar. 
Um, there's one thing though that we, we mentioned before that I just want to come back to because we are kind of coming up to time now. Um, but I think one of the things that, that people don't realise, and we, our, our whole message here is just have a go, just try stuff, be positive, you know, be brave, just go for it, jump in. There is a way that you can actively damage your social media, and we touched on it with, with Grow Traffic before, and that is, if, first of all, if you are posting stuff and it is not getting any engagement, there is nothing worse. It's like the death knell to your Facebook page is if you, um, it, you, you're continually putting stuff out, but you're not getting anything back. And there was a thing that went round recently and it was like a little meme that went round and it was like small businesses help each other during, um, during the coronavirus lockdown by inviting all your friends to like your business page and then ask them to invite all their friends to like their business page. And I, honestly, I spent... I was just like, I was looking at it, going, don't do it, don't do it. And I got so many invites to pages and I didn't, I didn't like any of them. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I didn't respond to a single one. Because if I'm, if your audience you have on your page is not engaged and they are not responding to you and they're not interested in your content, that is going to actively damage you. So there is no point just going on and inviting a load of people if they're not interested in your business, product, service, cause, charity, organization, whatever it is, because that will be actively damaging. You've got to build your audience the right way and the organic way, and yes, the slower way, um, but you've got to do it that way, haven't you? Yeah, I think there's, there, it was a couple of years ago, everybody was like, I've got 30,000 likes. I mean, you've got no engagement. But who cares? So you've got 30,000 30, people following you, but no one's engaging in anything you do. So I, I call them vanity likes. So basically, you've just gone out and got lots of vanity likes to make yourself look like you're popular. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful there. Yeah. It's, it's to make it look like you're popular. Now, I went through this process with um, <clears throat> an ex-business partner where they wanted thousands and thousands of likes. I would rather have, I would rather have 300 people on my business page all actively engaged than 30,000 and have 300 because pe Facebook is going to like having 300 people on your page with all 300 engaged more because it goes, oh, everybody on this page is interested. We'll share it to more people. You've got 30,000. We've had a few instances with clients where they've, they've asked us to buy likes or if we know how to buy likes or wow. and every, every time, you know, the, and it's usually the type of customer that thinks that they're in the right as well and we're wrong and we just say mm. no don't do it yes you've only got 300 likes at the minute but the people who are actually interested in your service yeah it's yeah. the best way to be yeah yeah, you, yeah. i think something else it's the avoid. same with traffic yeah. i was just going to mention another thing to avoid as well is is what i call begging it um facebook now recognizes um Facebook in particular, posts that have got words in them such as like or click or join or um, and that's yeah. that's going to push your content further down. So avoid begging it post basically. Like this post, share this post. If people want to like or share your post or engage with you, make the content interesting and they'll naturally engage with it. You, you shouldn't ask. It's, it's almost kind of like going up to people in the playground when you're a kid and begging them to be your friend. Don't do that. Don't be that person. <laughs> yeah. it is. It's really off-putting. And the thing is, people do it as well as, as soon as they meet you. And, and they'll... I've even had people where, you know, people message me and say, oh, I've, I've written this, will you like it and share it? Or I've, I've got this page where you share my page. And I'm like, no, because my audience are not interested in that. So why would I share your thing? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll read it and I'll like it, whatever it is, I'll do it personally. But I'm not going to share that unless that's something my audience are interested in because then they're going to, you know, that makes me look bad then. They're always like, oh, God, she's inviting me to another bloody thing. I don't want to go on it. So yeah, it's it's this as you say, Alicia. Think about it as you would real life. Would you go up to people and start conversations like that? No. So don't do it on social media. Okay, we're at, we're at five two now. So I just I just we've had some amazing tips there. Thank you. I just want to go around um, each of you now, and I want to get your your top tip. Uh, if you could, if you're going to say to people wanting to do social media for their business what would be your one thing that you would tell them? Hannah, what's yours? Uh, come up with a strategy, stick with it, um, post regularly, don't be afraid to be bold with it, make your strategy, have an authentic voice. That's about five tips. That's yeah, thank you. <laughs> Jenny, We've got no you? more left. 
Um, I think the tip for me is a million percent, and people roll their eyes when I say it, target audience. You need to know who they are, what they're interested in, what makes them excited, what makes them sad. You need to know these people inside out. Yeah, absolutely you do. Alicia, what about you? Mine would be about finding your voice, whether that's your, like Jenny does with her individual voice or us, a collective voice of the brand, is find that voice and stick to it. Mm. Yeah, and I think mine is very similar to that, but it is, <clears throat> and it's a, a massive cheesy buzzword that is around at the moment, but be or Don't say pivot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't be that. Be, be authentic because, you know, this well, spills, spoils around to exactly what we said at the beginning. But um, if you are portraying one version of either yourself or your business or whatever online, and then in real life, you're completely opposite, people are not going to buy that. People will call you out on social media. People who really know you will say that that's, you know, that's not real. Um, but also when they meet you, you will be a massive disappointment and your sales aren't going to go through. So just be yourself. Don't worry about being over, over, um, over corporate, but also just be authentic and don't try and be fake and put a front on all the rest of it. And that's it my tip. Work. No, I tried posting some fluffy stuff. I say fluffy stuff. I'm not very fluffy and woo-woo. But I posted a bit of a, a softly, softly kind of woo-woo post. And about 10 people jumped on it and went, who have you been replaced with? Okay. <laughs> I'll go back to dark humour and sarcasm and being obnoxious then. <laughs> That's exactly it. People will. People straight away, they, they will call you out on it and people do. And this is another thing. If you, if you try and lie and cheat and stuff on social media, people will call you out on it straight away. So don't do it. Just just be be real. Be real, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We had a really good session. Um, I'm off now to go and order some cocktails from the new cocktail bar that's opened and doing a delivery service. <laughs> what are the rest of you up to? Hannah, what are you up to this weekend? Uh, sunbathing mainly. Oh, lovely. Jenny? I don't know, I don't know yet. I've, I've, I know I've got work tonight. I've got new potential client discovery calls. Seven o'clock at night. Someone keeps booking this. Seven o'clock on a Friday oh, night. Seven o'clock. Yeah. Take it off my diary. Me. That's me. Mm. Alicia, what are you up to this weekend? Uh, well, my other half just firing barbecue up now, so nice. we'll gin time. <laughs> hey, there we go. A lovely bank holiday weekend all around. Thank you so much, all of you. That I think that's a really useful session. Obviously, we will come back to this in the future because uh, there is so much, so much to cover here. Somebody has just jumped on and said they missed the start of it. Is it available on catch-up? Absolutely. This video will now be available for you to watch via the Grow Traffic page whenever you want to watch it. Um, and we will be back next week with another session. Don't ask me yet what it's about because I've got absolutely no idea. Um, but thank you very much for joining us and we will see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.